All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back for another breakdown today. We got a fun one. We're looking at cars. It's two different time periods. This guy ran out of gas. Not a smart move to start the day. And where does he go from here? Fill up? That's not how that works when you're just pouring it on the side there. Did anybody catch that? What is he doing with that gasoline there? Oh, that's a hose, Patrick. I see. It's a clear hose. He's not just pouring it on the ground. Okay. Overcast means oh, we don't have to be backlit. Let's light this sucker up. I think we're going to see the soft hob method here. There it is. And front lit and overcast and front lit and sidey. Sidey, front lit, and let's go back lit. There we go. We see it. Quick panic. We're getting married. Oh, it's a couple. It's a flashback many years ago, but the truck looks newer. Smooch, hanging out. This is probably the second wife here in the other car. And they drive away. This is so much fun. Yay. I love weddings. And we're driving. Flare. Slow motion. Ah, <gasps> This is great. Blown out sky. Snooze. And <gasps> they caught us. Backlight. <gasps> you didn't. Yes, I did. No. Who are you? <gasps> the dog? No, the dog. And you see where it goes from here. Tears. Front light, back light, front light, front light. Ugh. Okay, so it's a good looking ad. Uh, it's funny, right? They're supposed to be uh, mom and dad meeting there, I would imagine. The stuff that I really want to look at is, okay, uh, you can see here that direction really doesn't matter if things are overcast, right? It would be cool if the sun was up here and it was a clear sky and you had all these shadows coming towards the camera and this was in shadow and it was all racing towards the camera and there was a shadow underneath the car and there would be lots of shape here. That would be cool. If it's overcast though, uh, just shoot the thing, right? People think if you're a cinematographer and you're working in overcast conditions and you're going to do these big wides, uh, you look like a genius because you can go super fast because you don't have to do that much. Well, you don't have to do anything. You just turn the camera on and you say, yep, we're ready. Now, Look at the difference here as we pop in, and the pen is enormous. Let's change that. Look at the difference here in the level inside of the car, right? Old mate is pretty, pretty, pretty dark in there. And bang. And now pretty, pretty, pretty light. And this is what we call uh, lighting. And we are smushing the light at this guy. Now, would it be cooler if the light was slightly more upstage and we got a little bit of shadow running down this way and pushed level this way? Uh, I would think so, but we're just filling in here, right? And you can see just how much the level has changed outside as well. If we go from here, kind of dark back here where we're shooting. And then as we come in here, you know, there's quite a quite a bit of level out there. So hardest thing to shoot in. Overcast is easy. Probably the easiest if you're just going for general shape. Uh, sun is the hardest because you have to plan perfectly. The worst, though, is intermittent. Like as the skies open up from time to time, uh, it just gets really, really difficult. Now, the sun goes from, you see it's all over there, fronty lit, and not a whole lot of light coming in this way towards the camera. And we come around to the other angle, and ho, oh, Father Christmas, check me out. We have got some serious backlight here. And this is really the way that you want to be looking, because what ends up happening outside, it's all down. So all the highlights only come through on the dark bits where we want people to actually look. What ends up happening, though, is you don't get a whole lot of shape here, right? It's pretty flat across the face. That's the thing you have to look out for when you're inside of a car like this and it's hard to get in angles. If you were to compare that shot, where is it? You know, you got that sort of level of lighting, right? Fairly flat. Counter that with this. Now, this is the perfect angle, right? We got light coming over, so you get that darkness, and then you get the little tiny bit of highlights, and you can't see anything in the background anyway. So this is one of those shots when you're doing inserts you can do them as long as you're close enough and the depth of field is shallow enough. You can do these anytime the, the sun is low. Just point the car in that direction and away you go, right? So from here, where's the look? Boom. This is the soft hub, right? The perfect soft hub if this guy would open up his eyes a little bit more. Uh, this is a beautiful looking shot. We're not shooting you know, directly into backlight. It's going to be more over this way, the, the sun. But it's coming down at an angle which means the hard light, which is this stuff here, is right on the body. And then up here is softer. But because we can't see this window, the other trick is we're taking all of the light away from this side, which gives us this darkness. You can see there's a little tiny leak in there. 
but this is a good looking shot, you know, because you got highlight back there, you got the dash running along, you got these little interesting lines all happening inside of the car, the hills in the background are interesting, but then the lighting on him is perfect, right? This is a good, good looking moody shot here, right? Like you can actually see the little light in his eyes and the little reflector, whatever is coming this way, you can actually see it down there, it's probably diffusion. Um, and as we circle forward, what happens now? We got a front lit shot, like we're getting full front lit here, right? Luckily, it's a fast moving shot and we don't have to focus too long on our gal. But look at the brightness change as we shift out. See how that fence goes from full front light to overcast. And look at how dark he gets too. Boom, we're back out. Okay, this one is also front lit, right? Ideally, you know, you wanna park the sun over here and have it coming this way. Just a matter of what the schedule comes down to. I like all this stuff though, All right, Like, let's make it three dimensional by shooting. We don't wanna, imagine if the camera crabbed right about 20 yards, right? So now we're looking dead onto this thing. You lose all the dimension of the building. So make sure that you can see the back uh, post of the building, right? That way, at least you know you're getting some dimension from the buildings themselves. Then you add in these little bits here and if it just so happens to be, it's got to be front light, you know, at least you can tick off some of the things of the framework to make it halfway interesting. And I like that little boom down too here. We come across, okay, well now we're getting some longer shadows on the ground and it's not overcast, right? So that's good. We're dollying along, a little bit ropey on the dolly, back to our backlit sh backlight shot. Now the sun is fully out and mom gets a face full of front light and dad is confused. Okay, backlight for our lady. And then now let's get out to the where we want it to look because we have this. Okay, so this is harsh, right? This is no, you're so, you're so wide. We got the interesting side light going on here with the shadow on this side, bright on this side, but coverage inside of this car right now, this angle on the road, this would be really tricky. It would be very, very harsh. This one, now you're talking. Now we've got backlit hills, edge, edge on everything interesting, shadow of the vehicle coming towards the car, right? That is what makes this whole car stand out is how down in the shadows the background is. You don't wanna be looking up, you know, if you come down in level and start looking up more towards the sky, this is all gonna be blown out in crapola. You don't want that. You want it to be nice. And there we go, we got, of course, our little flare shot. And again, just looking, everything in here is backlit. And then this is backlit too. Now look what's going on here. Same interesting concept, right? Little edge running down the person that's getting hit in the face. Shadow in the background. Okay, this is kind of lit up, but this is what you're exposing to here, right? You're exposing to the area that you cannot control. You could still get, depending on how they're doing this travel, if you're doing low loader or if you're doing, you know, talent on the actual road. Talent on the road is really, really hard to get away with just for permit purposes. So if you're on a low loader, you can still put up something that you can run on a little Jenny here. You know, you run a little 4K or something like that on the low loader and you can push in level this way if you want to keep it um, nice and light. Now this, this is called a blown out sky, right? And this is looking directly into the sun. If you didn't want to blow out the sun, you'd have to have sun over here out of the frame or sun below the horizon or sun behind one of these clouds, right? but it's so super hot up here that you get this blob of nothingness, which is a, a really, really strange look. But you don't want the opposite, which would be, say the sun path goes this way, right? This is east, this is west over here. Uh, you don't want the sun coming smushing into these hills because that's gonna look terrible too. So it's, um, you know, pick your poison there. Okay, so no shadows on the ground, car driving along. Oh, we switch to full sun here, right? We've got now full sun, a little bit of cloud down here, but I like how the road bends in, bends around. And if we come to, where's our stop? Here again, back to overcast. Like you would imagine the DP on this couple of days is just going, none of this matches. And I don't care. <laughs> and we go from overcast to whoop, backlit. Now we have picked the perfect angle, but man, here it comes. The, here comes the shadow, right? The sun is setting lower and lower. Cinematographer starting to panic, going, we gotta get this wide before that shadow hits these cars or the gig is up, I'll never work again in this town. And we cut around to front light and backlight. All right, well, it's not really backlight. There's no light coming in here, right? 
There's no sun back here pushing through these things. It's nice and dirty back there. So it sort of mucks up the whole scene. Even this little stuff up here adds some framing. But this is really, really down. We're playing these people really down, but everything is really down. There's not like some hot highlight somewhere. So the difference will be this angle, right, on these guys. Look at how we've gone from front lit on these guys. This is going to be the much harder angle to make look nice. Very, very difficult. You can see, uh, what is that? That's like, a, almost looks like a maxi brute in there or something. Can't imagine they're using tungsten outside though. We've got the real sun coming this way. And then we've got all of our level that we're going to be using for this setup coming the opposite way, right? But it's not really a sun sandwich. Uh, I mean, I guess technically it is, but there's no real level getting inside of the car. So because you can't tell the level outside, you're basically creating your own look. So this bad boy gives it straight away and keep scrolling through. This one is going to be the much easier angle to shoot. And say the sun is out and it's over here, you could almost do this with, sometimes when you're inside of the cars, you want to give it a little bit more punch. You want to give the, the light a little bit more point, a little bit more punch. So you wouldn't go like an ultra bounce if you're going to bounce. You'd go like a lame or something like that with a little bit more push. And then you can diffuse uh, until your heart's content, really. You can diffuse less for her because she's further away from the bounce, more for him, whatever you want to do. Uh, you would just angle the car to it. And these dirty windows help because you have no idea. Your orientation inside of this landscape that we just came from in the wide is completely blown. So, like, you're not going to be able to tell, hey, that's not the same hill because this thing is so dirty, right? Where is it? Right there. Now, compare this backlight to that backlight, right? This thing comes out of nowhere. <laughs> this is tricky business, man. It's tricky, tricky being in a car with this amount of coverage. This is probably the ideal time. And this is the ideal look, right? And they're probably, I mean, it feels a little bit electric, this. But you could do this with the bounce. And this is the perfect sun in the perfect location. So sun back here gives us our little edge on there, our little edge on there. Can't see any lights or anything in there. But you can definitely feel it here, right? You can see in the eye light there, something coming this way, pushing level this way, and then just using shadow. You might have to run neg down this side of the car, but... It might, you might just be able to get away with just contrast. And now this one, where's his angle? So dad's angle, you can see dad's eye light here. So we are creating this. You can do real easy with some ND. You can ND the window on the car. Then you push your level this way through the key and all you're trying to do is get this key level and this background ratio where you want them. Then you can start to decide, okay, well, how dark do we want it on the shadow side? And you can add neg, or you can take it away, or you can push it out, or you can add bounce if you want to make it a little bit less dramatic. Uh, but really, it's about, do we have a generator? Do we have a way to get this much power versus this window? And if you don't have ND gel, if you don't have ND that you can put on the window or a net, well, now you have to get even more level out of this light to smoosh those ratios closer together. And if we come around, backlight again, you can see the eye lights here on her. But this is still... You know, we're playing this really, really down and, and, and natural feeling. This is not Hollywood slick, uh, you know, beauty lighting for somebody. This is trying to make it realistic. Come back out. And now there's dad's eye light. And you can see really, really soft on the lighting. No harsh lines on this lighting. Just trying to make it as big and soft as possible so that it feels like it's coming from outside the car. Now, normally what you do in a situation like this where you have such a tight single inside of a car is you will play like an eight by eight over the entire car, a solid. So that removes all of the ambient sky that's like pushing in and ruining your shape. You just take it all away with a solid, put it right on top of the car. Uh, that way you, you, it requires much less level to go ahead and start shaping inside the car. We come around to the dog, even the dog has an eye light. It's looking pretty good though with all these little things in the foreground and this little hot spots back here and all that dust on the window. That dust on the window is probably like the main thing. The cinematographer would be like, yes, dust on the window, please. Art department, help me out. Now, when we come here, <laughs> look at how soft. <laughs> look at how soft this is. Just diffuse the hell out of the light. Because now, because we're looking the opposite direction that we were, we're looking into the front lit area, which means we need lots and lots of level coming this way. So we're going to use the sun and just diffuse it and then run neg down this side of the car so we start to add some shape. But look at how soft this transition is from shadow to light and then how low the actual highlights are on the skin. That's because we're using a piece of diffusion versus something like this, right? Much hotter there, 
much further down there. And we come around, backlight again, more of dad, he's confused. This shot we talked about, right? Balance back at them, easy, but keeping the car in there, like keeping the little layers in there to make it better. And we come around, is there anything else in here interesting? This is soft hub. This is the soft hub method, right? And say you have a dash that is, or say you have a car like this that's got a pretty steep window, and you're not getting this exactly where you want, Again, you can take the 8x8 that you were using for the singles and then just move it this way along the car so that you only have a little tiny bit that sticks out. Then you can place this shadow, this hard cut, perfectly where you want it because you don't want this hard light on their faces because it doesn't look nice, right? If it's up here, it looks terrible. Down here, it looks good because then it gives you a, an excuse to push in angled soft light, right? All of this push-in that is happening here is just a big, soft, additional source. And then over here, if you want, add an egg, take this down, or don't add an egg and open it up and have it a little bit more similar. Probably what you're going to do though for sure is outside of the car on this side of it, you're gonna just lay an egg on the actual side of the car because you don't want it, you don't want it getting flat, right? You wanna avoid that, but maybe you like this backlit look. The other thing you can do in this configuration is if you have, so you've got the sun coming through here, which is this little line down here. Then you're pushing level through with a lamp to get this amount of key. Uh, if you want more out of this, because the sun is coming from over here, this is where you can use your bounce and just push it back this way, you know? You can use uh, something with a little bit of punch. You, you wouldn't want to go like crazy like a mirror or something unless you're going to push it through diffusion, but that's a good way to get it. And then here, interest, head still in, pretty wide eye line, keeping this stuff in, you know, just to keep up the interest, but don't let that hard light hit somebody on the face. And then look at how it just goes away, right? Got hard light here. Next shot. Where are you? Gone. No hard light, no nothing. Now, this, this not seeing the sky makes it really, really easy to get that amount of level inside of the car. Significantly easier. And then back here, whoo, he's going on the face. This is a challenging shot because you gotta deal with that bright background which is really, really tricky and makes no sense in the orientation of the shot. If you think back to all the things that we've seen from the wide to the other singles, this should be in shadow, right? The sun should be over here coming this way, but they've just moved the car around because they can. And we drive out. Now look at the lighting change there. Woo, diffusion again, make it nice and soft. You can see it in the eyes because she's a lady and we make it soft. And now we're out to completely different light. Right, look at that light on her. <laughs> She's surprised. <gasps> Where did the light go? I looked so good before. And backlight and dust, please. Can we get some dust in the foreground? Yes, you can. And where's that other shot? Look at how dark. And perfectly backlit here because that's what we want. Because we want these people dark in the foreground and we want this little edge on everything, right? And the far, basically the farther away you get, if you're gonna schedule this, the farther away you get from seeing these people inside, the higher up you want the sun. As it goes lower in the sky, that's when you can start to see in the car more. Firestone, yes, drive off. Ta-da, and we're done. I think that's it. Okay, and then there it went again. That hard light went again, and nobody cares, right? That's what she's saying right there. She's saying, don't chase the hard light, Bob. <gasps> I like the soft light better. Yes. Ha ha ha. Yeah, that's right. Soft light better. And we're done. Okay, uh, that's going to do it for this one. Hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, if you want to check out more of this stuff, more in the film world, I can't remember what we're doing on Patreon this week, but it's good and it's film and we go into a lot more depth. Uh, check out the Patreon channel, description, link, all that stuff.